here with Jesse Townsend. Jesse's a personal trainer at Parkway Athletic Club. Thanks for being with us, Jesse. Yep, good to be here, Steve. Let's talk about something, an exercise that people should do over 50. Well, everyone should do it. And maybe there's some limitations, people that are over 50, but let's talk about the squat, the barbell squat. It, it, I mean, that exercise just stimulates your whole body. So do you think it's important for people who are over 50 or older to do that if they're capable? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and then like what you're saying, capacity, right? I'll kind of start there. So there has to be in any exercise you're doing has to be, you know, this risk over reward kind of a thought that goes into it um, before you do exercise. So yeah, with sometimes with modification, uh, may be necessary when they first start a squat. It may not be like an exact barbell, you know, back squat. Um, some people might have to do something that is, is a less load, especially on spine, but still, so advantages, you know, to this is like for everybody, but especially people over 50, um, you know, think about probably one of the most engaging compound movements or multiple joint movements that you have, and you have tissue that's going to work you know, from pretty much your ears down to your toes, right? So uh, the stabilizing, the, the balance effect that you get added to it for these stabilizer muscles and all the little ones in between. And man, and I'll just say it from, from my perspective, you know, 20 some odd years of, of lifting weights at either competitive level and, and even as amateur, just learning how to do it in gym class in school, like a lot of people, um, squat has always been a part of my exercise system and I'll continue doing it. Like I said, sometimes for different things, I use different methods of squats. I use different types or modifications um, depending on, on what I'm working, but man, the core and the activation of, of hormones that it gives somebody, you know, knowing that majority and a huge chunk of our muscle is in our legs. So, you know, stimulating, you know, calories being burned and adding more muscle for the effect of, of your basal metabolic rate raising, you know, about 50 calories burned per pound of muscle you add. So, yeah, the list kind of keeps going, you know, bone density, you know, at a high level. And hey, like I was going to say just a minute ago, it's still hard for me after 20 something years and for sure, you know, on a healthy level, you know, no matter how many times I've done it, still a difficult exercise no matter what. Yeah, it, it, it's like it activates every muscle in your body and it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy. And when you do it, even at a moderate intensity level, it's a workout. So, workout. and you guys, you can start off with, you know, dumbbell squats or something that's more, uh, or that's something that's simple like that um, with lighter weight. You can even do it at home. You can do body squats, but start somewhere. Yep. And squats is probably the first exercise that you want to put in your program or you want to work up to, it's something that you want to be thinking about. Don't you think Jesse? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Put it on the map. You know, um, like we're saying with modifications, I had a lady yesterday, uh, first time really doing a lot of different weightlifting, but she, she had been doing squats prior to coming to us and had been doing them somewhere else and said to me before we did them, Hey, I've done a ton of these, you know, we do these all the time. And as I evaluated her and I put her through, you know, her part of the squat assessment that I got to was really only capable of body weight squatting. Like I would say, you know, like a 20 degree, you know, movement, which honestly for her was good that she was practicing it, no doubt. Um, but with a little modification, I raised her heels. I had her do a hip width, you know, stance. So she had a little bit more power. Um, and again, you could do, some people prefer all these different stances, but I do hip width. I can raise heels from anywhere from a half an inch up to about three inch of a raise, depending on what is good for the person. And, and I had her also hold on to uh, TRX straps is what I used yesterday. You can use bars at, you know, about this level or close to your, your midsection. Um, anyhow, so she held on to that. She was able to get back a little bit better, be on her heels and midfoot, not her toes. And, and again, push from that heel elevation with a little manipulation of hips dropping a little bit better, more comfortably for her. It was able to come down to like a 90 degree and she hadn't done that before. And so again, uh, yeah, a little bit of effort put into what's good for you when you start doing them like any lift. 
um, and then progression. And, and over time, you might be doing barbell back squats with, you know, hundreds of pounds. And the last thing I would say is make sure that you guys get good coaching. Okay, you want to, you don't just go do some of this stuff. If you've never done it before, if you're a beginner or if you're, you're older, make sure that you have someone there, especially at the beginning, that's coaching you, uh, training you, and just kind of making sure that you're going through the technique right. That's important. So as always, Jesse, we thank you for your input and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Steve. Good to be here.